It's Ariana Shokomi, and she's just about to get on course and out of the wind here in Hakuba Valley. And I don't want to call it out, but the venue definitely allows a trick or two, especially if you're called Ari Trikomi. She's been riding a ton with her friends, with the Pomish crew out of Innsbruck, being influenced by their creativity. And I called it out, a 360 to start things off. Oh yeah, just the way she finished and uh, solidified her win on the Freeride World Tour last season. That's how she continues. Coming into this next hit, we've also seen some tricks off it. That was the Blakeham backflip at the very start, stomping an air off that. It's been a really good feature. Haven't seen that many people hitting it, but Ari making the most of it, just looking so smooth and solid down here so far. So happy for her. She's feeling good in her skin as it's directly translated from German. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, that but... totally makes sense in English as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting a little bit bucked on that landing, but holding it together, riding her tails, but in a strong way. It's like, oh, that landing wasn't as expected, but I'm going to stay on my feet. I don't care. That's where you see confidence and uh, trust in your abilities. Yeah. yeah. She's been riding a lot of powder this season. She said it was hard to leave Innsbruck in Austria. Uh, the Feeble Run stop is coming up in a couple of months, and that has so much snow right now. So she was, uh, yeah, it's nice to go to Japan, but Austria is good too. And I think she's looking at pretty good score here, even though she's the first one out of the gate. I'm going to call it that she's going to have a good day. And uh, maybe not uh, so sad to come to Japan after all. And the Aaron style is right up there. Uh, I think we're going to be looking at a good score for Ari Chikomi here. Marcus Eder, drop in in three, two, one, drop in. Yeah. Marcus Eder from South Tyrol. Uh, one of my favorite skiers, I'm going to say. I'm just going to put it out there. That these guys are all my favorite skiers, but Marcus just putting it sideways and enjoying the power like that is just such a pleasure to watch. And will we see a seven of him? I wouldn't be surprised. Don't want to jinx him. Flat, flat spin three. Really nice flat three, Japan. Japan is the name of the grab. We are also in Japan, but just uh, wanted to clarify that. Yes. Huge transfer 360, not the cleanest of the landings. That was so sick, though. I don't think the angle really did it justice. That was a pretty huge transfer, and now just absolutely sending it through this double down area that we saw Andrew come unstuck on before. Looking a little bit wild himself, but staying on his feet for now. And hopefully the whole run down, of course. Mark is following a track from uh, Yu Sasaki, I believe. So, really cool creative line so far. Putting in a spread eagle just for fun, maybe intentionally. Getting caught up in a tree, but I think he's already past the end of the judging line. So, getting a little bit wild in the bottom half of the run, but <laughs> huge flat three, nice air, nice 360s. Marcus is still doing a super good job in there, though. 86.67, knocking Yu Sasaki out of the hot seat. Coming on over from Japan, where he had some good times, get a bunch of deep how, had a good time in Revy as well, and now here in Kicking Horse Mountain Resort, golden, beautiful British Columbia, giving a wave and a good luck to his friends and compatriots at the top, as he always does, and he's so styly and so solid, I think this venue's really going to suit him. Yeah, Craig Murray blowing minds in Japan with that cork seven with the uh, the blunt crab on the tail there. Heading down the ridge, we're going to see if he's going to pump off the ridge or he's going to go down into the spine zone where Tanner went. Get a little slash turn there, just checking things out. This is a great way to actually see where you're going. Get real close to the corner so you can kind of take a look over um, and also throw some snow over for the crowd. Is he getting right into the top of the spine section like Tanner did? Looks like it. Yeah, you can see Tanner's track. I think that Craig has gone too far and is actually below where he meant to go. Uh, that just based on the body language that we're seeing, yeah, he's waving. Um, Craig Murray. Looks a bit frustrated there. Yeah. Hopefully he's got something lined up and doesn't go blind from this point because it is gnarly. Of course that's not blind. How could you spin a three like that in the area? What do you mean he's lost? Look at him go with the transfer! Oh my oh, God, Craig! Craig! What the hell was that? He wasn't lost. He was hyping up the crowd. That was his hype up move. Craig Murray finding a third air there on the extra credit. There was, I, I completely misread that. Craig Murray was putting his hands up to make sure everybody had eyes on what was about to go down. Now she's here on tour right where she belongs. That's what, yeah, exactly what you're saying. She is on course. She is the winner of the FWQ in the Americas, where you have to be the winner in Eurasia or the winner in the Americas. You fight hard to get here, and I'm stoked to have her along. 
Jacqueline making her way down the top of the ridge, heading down to the cornice. And we're going to see her probably arc a bit of a left turn here and pump off their nice, strong start. The wind is loaded in this side of the face. It, you know, it looks a little bit scoured, but it, the surface is actually super soft. And you can see Jacqueline really looking like she's enjoying herself. That's right. Getting over to the same ear as uh, Anna all over, but managed to get a, a bit of a better landing on that. A little bit with this wind effect that looks a bit variable, but Jackie making no meal of it, just sending it straight down across court. Jacqueline air, taking it huge. Double. Oh, that is what we're here to see. She is going to be so fired up. She definitely didn't have the results she was looking for in Hakaba, and that is what she wanted to show the world here. Holy damn. Like you said, she didn't ski to her potential in Hakuba, and it's amazing to see that. That was so solid and fast. Hedwig Vessel trying to find the line that's going to suit her ski style. She comes from the mogul background, um, so she's, you know, technically she's a strong skier, but of course she's got a deep bag of tricks. We saw in Japan that massive backflip that she threw and took it right to her feet, super clean landing. So she's heading out into the sunny pow zone where we saw um, Ariana and Eva go, and we're going to see which side of this spine she ends up on, looking like she's going down to the Stefan Hausel clip. Yeah, that's right. Stefan Hausel, of course. Uh Nine-time Fred World Tour competitor won the event in 2011 by hitting this cliff that Hedwig is lining up right now, and she sends it four line, stomps it like it ain't no thing. Just looks so solid on her skis. Is she a racer as well as a mogul skier? That was cool. She went off the biggest possible part of that and landed like she had never even left the ground. Now Hedwig trying to find the uh, you know the more playful aspects of the run. We saw we saw this zone play really well with the snowboarders. We saw Ariana and Eva go over here, so we know this section scores well. She's going even further over. I think this is the same uh, section where we saw Eva go, and uh, yeah, just getting another clean hole. These uh, these these athletes they're so smart in being able to pick out the clean spots to land. Looks so solid in the air as well, Hedwig. First time we had a Norwegian rider on the tour for a while. I think the last time was Torgrim Bole going back a few years. So cool to have a Norwegian back representing Scandinavia, getting into the jumpy, playful, getting into the yumps now. Yeah, yeah this section has definitely seen a lot of play ahead. Big, you know, she she wants to find a spot where she can throw the freestyle and she yeah, sure does. Yeah, Hedvig! Sick backflip from the Norwegian. So stoked to see that. He's heading uh, towards the snowboarder men's zone over to the Sunny Pow side. Uh, we're going to see what he's got in store for us over there. That's right, Marcus. Such a nice guy, and as you say, such a relaxed attitude, but such a super sender as well. Taking that top hit big, and that's into exposure as well. I'm not sure if you could see it from the camera angle, but nice 360 there as well, joining the Victor De La Rue club. And looking for a transition over here, maybe. Yeah, getting a little face shot there as he popped the top off the spine and now moving across, getting cross court there, finding transition super smooth there. This is really creative in the classic Marcus Eater style. He's always just got a slightly different take on the on the face. Now he's going to come in underneath this thing and getting still making his way back up across there. Transitioning again, transfer airs. We love them. He obviously loves them. And that's a really good pick today with the snow, I think. If you go four line, it can be hard to shut it down. So popping up and over to give yourself as much speed or as little speed as you want to land in exactly the right place. Really smart skiing from Marcus. Yeah, lining up a nice laid out backflip there. And he's going to get cross hill off this one as well. Smooth top to bottom run for Marcus Eater. Now it's the Frenchman, Leo Slemet, in the gate. So Leo with a 360 right out of the gate, heading over there and adding a couple of features. He's definitely upping his feature count as he heads down into this zone. 360 there off the same one we saw Tom hit a little bit earlier, but a very different approach into that section for Leo. And another 360, three 360s so far, he's only halfway down the top of the face, treating us to that freestyle show that we thought we might see, especially in the playground section, the lookers right. But now going back to the free ride style, stomping down on that top hit before making his way quickly to this bottom here as a double. Yeah, Leo Slamet approaching this one. This has been a bit of a classic landing right next to the bush. Absolutely solid there. Leo Slamet lighting things up on the bottom half of this venue with some uh, classic free ride style.
All right, so Jackie Paso, she's coming out hot. She's showing that aggression right out out of the start gate and straight away finding a pocket in that air. Jackie Paso looking strong so far. Yeah, that's right. Two airs straight after each other without much turning in between. So really strong start to the run. Coming to the lookers left, riders right, rather than to the playground on the lookers right, as most of the other riders have gone to. And lining up a big air that we saw a Vedic Gorik backflip and I know Navarro send. Jackie taking it deep, a yeah. little bit of a backslap, but stomping it from the American. Absolutely massive. That is what we have come to love about Jackie Paso runs. When she goes, she goes all out and she's got more in store as she heads her way down. There's only one track in this section and now there's going to be two. Jackie yeah, Paso. Jackie Paso. Same era as Yu Sasaki, only the second track in there today after Yu was in the skiing guys category. So fourth category, lots of riders through the venue already. Jackie Paso finding some cool creative stuff and sending it massive. Elizabeth Gerson, the local out of Verbia, and she is on course. Heading left, same as Hazel Burnbaum so far. See if she takes the same cliff. Oh, and yeah, she, does. she goes big on that first cliff. So fast. Holy moly, shut down speed perfectly. Will she take another big step there? She does. What? Oh, my gosh, that was so massive. She's on the tracks of Pia Nick Gunderson. She took that cliff at the same spot. But what an opening. Like, this is mental. Yeah, nice way to hit that cliff as well, setting herself perfectly up for this next air, which she takes so, so deep. deep. <laughs> oh my gosh, Elizabeth. And you're straight landing out the body, you're turning that roller into an air as well. He was competing on the qualifiers since 2012, I believe, and now he is back. First time on the World Tour, first time on the Beck, and he is here to rip it up with so much speed coming out of the gate. Oh, yeah, Central Kuloar, super steep terrain. First Making time ever way. on the back doors, already into Hollywood Cliff, opening things up with a huge air. Yeah, buddy. Con continuing to riding super strong, huge turns. Getting into a new zone there or for him, definitely new zone. What we will see of the huge cliff at the bottom, a huge backflip. Sick. Sick. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Vedic Gorik, what a way to open things up. That was a mind-bending run. The Frenchman 